Welcome to Kentucky Hemp Work Lesson 27. I'm LeVar Daniel, official with LeVar Daniel. I'm currently sponsored by Kentucky Hemp Works. And uh, today I want to show you the basics of what I use to catch bluegill, the bait I use, the setup I use. My friend, Mr. Big, I think he get more likes on Instagram than I do. <laughs> I post him sometime. I come out here. I guess I've just been coming out here feeding him for so long that he got real friendly with me. He like my he like my water buddy. When nobody else come out with me, Mr. Big come out and hang out with me. Okay. <laughs> this is a six foot medium action rod, and I use a small hook like a number four hook, a very small split shot weight and a small cigar cork. I usually only fish no more than two foot deep because anything other than that, you'll probably be fishing under the bluegill and not on top of the bluegill. A lot of the fish like to feed up instead of off of the bottom that I fish for. And so today we're just gonna be fishing a little bit above their head, five to two feet from the bank. And we're gonna make this work. The bait of choice that we're using today will be a red worm. A red worm is a small worm that they sell around here at local bait shops and at Walmart. It's just a small worm. I'll show you one. It's just a small worm that has its own unique smell. We got friendly bees as well. And uh, this is what we'll be using today to catch bluegills. When I was a kid, I was taught to thread the fishing worm onto the hook, which would be me sticking the hook, sticking the worm at the very beginning of the hook and thread it all the way up the hook. But growing up, I realized that if I hook the worm and leave part of the head and part of the tail hanging off of the hook, that it would make the worm have a lot more action. And the action is what actually attract the fish. This is the this is the the way I was taught as a kid to hook a worm up. You actually thread it all the way on the hook. The worm should look like the shape of the hook. After you get your worm thread on, make sure that you add your drip of Kentucky Hemp Work Fix Attractor. You don't need a lot. All you need is one small drip or two drips. I wouldn't go more than that. This bottle should last you, honestly, a whole fishing season. Once you get your bait attracted on with your bait, just give it a toss out and you have a fish in no time. I usually start about five feet away from the bank and if I don't catch a fish five feet away from the bank then I'll just reel it in maybe six inches until I get over top of those fish and when you get around bluegills it don't take long at all for them to bite Fish attracting actually works until your bait is gone. Water and oil don't mix. And so the oil actually sticks on your bait until the bait is all the way gone. You don't have to keep re-putting this on every bait that you use, especially if you're using artificial lures. Once you apply it, it's applied. I started noticing a while ago when I first when I first got the fish attracted, um, I would go out and fish and I would catch fish. But after I would actually put the fish attracted on the bait, they would bite it a lot quicker. Like, it had got to the point where I didn't even have to set the hook on the fish. The fish was actually set the hook on themselves because they liked the way that the fish attracted taste. And they would just bite it and wouldn't let go. They would jerk on it so much that I would actually catch a fish by the fish catching themselves. 
I tell people another thing too. If you're fishing for bluegill, you shouldn't have to wait five to ten minutes to catch a fish. If bluegill in the area, they're going to bite less than one minute. See, the fish are in a kind of a, they're in a, in a real strange mood because of the weather and also because right now it's spawning season. So a lot of the fish, what they're doing is down protecting eggs and protecting small fry, which are, are the baby fish. And so a lot of the times right now between March and June, when you're fishing, a lot of the fish don't eat because they're hungry. They eat because they're being aggressive to try to keep danger away from, the, away from their babies. I done been places and you can actually see the fish, like hundreds of fish, and they won't bite anything until it look like something to bring danger to, to their babies, and they will, they will try to bite and kill it, like, immediately. They're very protective of, of the fry. That's what they call the baby fish, fry. I actually need to get this like directly in their face that's irritating them is like danger and that's what make them actually bite real good around this time. And to, to take the hook out, the hook is actually in and curved up. So all you will actually need to do is uncurve the hook and the hook should come out perfectly easy. When you catch a bluegill, the proper way to take the bluegill off the hook so it won't fin you because these fins will fin you and it will hurt for a week. So what you wanna do is hold your hand like in a C. You start at his head and cuff the fish this way. This way, if Casey start flipping and flopping around, he won't fin you. Push the hook down because it hooked in, so you just hook it out. And you'll be holding the fish just like this, and that's the best way to do it. All right, now I wanna show y'all how to clean the, the bluegill and get him prepared to take home to cook and eat. A lot of people have um, spoons that they use because the spoon is cuffed and the, the way the scales are set up, it's kind of easy to do. I've been doing it for a while, so I'm going to use my, my pocket knife, my blade. What you want to do is start at the, at the tail of the fish and start getting the scales off. You have scales. You have scales on the top part of the fish, over by the fins on top of the head, and also on the bottom part of the fish. So you wanna make sure you get all of those, fit, those scales off because trust me, you don't wanna eat scales. Basically all you wanna do, the scales are laying, going to the right. So basically all you wanna do is make sure you're coming to the left and it will make the scales come off very easy. You get all the scales off of one side, make sure you get the belly. And you wanna flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. If you try to scale to the right, you will just go over top of them. Scale to the left. That's it. Give it a quick rinse off. Let me rinse it off real quick. And we'll cut the head off. When, you, when you're cutting the head off, 
a lot of people start at the at the first beginning of the fin and cut straight down but what they're doing is missing this much meat off the fish head it's actually meat going all the way to the top of his head so what you want to do you want to come in at an angle and make like a small circle come in at the top of the head and your ending cut should be down right here right behind the fins the head should be shaped like this and you actually don't even have to waste this piece right here if you out fishing for the rest of the day you can actually hook this on your hook and throw it out and fish for catfish so none of the fish actually go to waste even even when you cut the guts out you can use the guts as fish bait to catch catfish as well to get the guts out what you want to do up under these fins you'll see the anal the anal hole and you'll just stick the blade in there come out in between the fins and that'll open the fish up then what you want to do take your thumb or either your first finger go into the cavity of the fish and peel those out and you actually do if you out in a survival mode and need to survive you wouldn't disregard or throw away any of this this will be bait and this is also bait when you get done doing that your fish is prepared all you have to do is put some batter or flour on this some meal put it in the hot grease and it's ready to eat right off. come up and put his head in my pocket like he take her